Oh yeah, that makes everything all right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Time Machine. I'm Harper, and this is drawing prompt number seven of the 100 Drawing Prompts Challenge. That's right, friends, the 100 Drawing Prompts Challenge. And at this rate, I'll probably have to draw the last 20 or so posthumously. But you know the drill, so let's all head on over to the mystical fruit bowl of destiny and choose today's prompt. Yeah, go ahead, I'll meet you over there. Mystical Fruit Bowl of Destiny. All right, let's mix them up really well. And today's drawing prompt is Monster's Coil. Finally, an easy one, am I right? Oh, let's rock and roll! Hmm, I will probably take the easy way out on this one and just draw a monster. Coiling or not. <laughs> Hold on, can we just back it up here a second to check out how puffy, bloated, and old I look in this opening monologue? <laughs> Holy shit. The last two years of COVID got me like, too many snacks, too many drinks! I look like Elvis in 1976. All I need is a star-spangled jumpsuit and a triple cheeseburger. All right, let's move on before I start to cry. Okay, monster's coil, huh? Well, let's see. This one could be a noun or it could be a verb. If it's a verb, I've got a question. Do all monsters coil? I don't think so. Let's not jump to conclusions and stereotypes about which verbs monsters do or don't do. But, and you didn't hear this from me, I've heard that they've also been known to creep, sneak, squirm, crawl, haunt, scare, scratch, slash, scream, and gnash their teeth. Yes, gnash. On the other hand, if this art prompt is a noun, then Monster's Coil could be, I don't know, a new hairstyle? Oh my god, did you see Jessica's hair? Yeah, she got a Monster's Coil. Even though I like totally hate her, I gotta admit, it looks pretty good. Or it could be a fancy drink at the nightclub that just opened downtown. Yeah, bartender, give me a screwdriver, two Harvey wall bangers, and a monster's coil for the lady. Or it could be a sailor's knot. I say, here's a bowline and a double half hitch on the end here, and I've tied a monster's coil on the port stern rigging for extra strength. Why, yes, I agree. All of those voices were stupid. But check out this awesome segue. That's the cool thing about art prompts. You're the boss. They spark ideas and fan the flames of amazing images. Or at least they give a little squirt of WD-40 on your brain gears and get you moving in the drawing direction. And speaking of drawing, let's go live to the one you're watching right now. All right, here we are live with our drawing and painting already in progress. Step one was to take some yellow ochre watercolor and just block in our main shape. Sort of a road map so we know where we're going and just how the hell we're going to get there. Then I took some crimson red and went over the top of that and also did some drippity drip and some flickety flick. Because this is going to be the main base color, so we're going to just stick with that red because of course... Red is one of the spookiest colors there is. All right, let's take another pass with the crimson red and start to darken up some of the spots that I think are gonna be shadows in future. That is not a spoiler. And those shadows, I'm gonna use some green. So uh, that means that we're gonna be talking about some complementary colors with this red and the green. And oh, there's the green now. Hey green, how's it going? Hey, I'm going to go ahead and add some more green to the spots I think are going to be sort of in shadow and or darker. All right, adding some green to that back back leg, not to be confused with the back front leg. And let's go ahead and put some green for some color balance back there in that tail. There we go. A little more green on the back back leg. Looking good. Looking good. All right. All right, now we've got a stumpy little piece of charcoal, sort of my go-to uh, tool right now, kind of into it, kind of kind of digging it. Uh, I'm gonna make a line drawing on top of our, our base colors here, and then just sort of smear and smudge it around to try to get us some darker tones. Filling in some hair there, that really, really coarse, rough javelina hair. I think that's what this monster would have, sort of looks like that. 
All right, coming down the foot, and let's go ahead and put some hooves on this guy. Yeah, that's like a, that's like a standard monster sort of slash devil kind of a foot look, right? A hoof, that's always scary. Everybody's afraid of those. Go ahead and smear and smudge some more of that charcoal around, get us some, some better tones. All right, coming around the mouth there, looking good. Just sort of outlining at this point and then smearing it in as we go. Let's work on that ear. All right, looking good. Get the inside of that. Make it look a lot more ear-like, sort of ear shape. Now, my original plan was to sort of make the head look, uh, look like a pig or even like a cow, give it a little more of a, a bovine look, a little more stretched out. And it ended up just sort of looking like a cross between a wolf and a dragon, which don't get me wrong, that is wicked bad and I would totally paint that on my van or my Trans Am or Camaro. But in this case, that's not what I was going for, but it just sort of faded into that because that's sort of my natural uh, style is to go for a wicked sweet. All right, uh, some work on the ribs there. Go ahead and add some charcoal to the tail. Let's do some more smearing, get that back front leg looking a little darker there we go all right let's get some darkness happening on those claws up front and then i thought you know what what is this what does this monster need this monster needs some hyena spots that's right hyena spots they always make your monsters look at least 28 to 29 percent cooler i would say i mean if done right All right, let's smear some more of that charcoal around. Sort of get some darks here on the edges. Boop, 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 boop. Really lots of finger work on this one. All right, next is some unbleached white. I'm gonna go ahead and knock back some of the super powerful white of the page back there and sort of uh, blend in some of the charcoal smears that we have because I don't want it to look too pristine. All right, right here on the head, I felt that there was too much charcoal and we needed it to be lighter on the eye crown there on the eyebrow. So that was just some water, just some clean water on the brush there and you just boop, take it right up. Okay, and then I started on the title type here. I just wanted to look like sort of a 90s era, sort of Vertigo comics, sort of Sienkiewicz, Baron story style. Go ahead and look him up if you want to. And then to add in some more color, I dragged some uh, dry acrylic blue across and then boop, made that mistake. I won't do that again, I might. And then I said, you know what, we need some yellow. Let's smear some yellow across here. Don't mess up the eye though, don't. No, I said, don't, don't mess up the eye, damn it. All right, we'll fix that later. Added a little more yellow, just to give some variation and to make it look not so, so stale. All right, I'm gonna add some, some magic sparkles to that eye because of course, and then the head was looking too dark, so I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and get some just straight crimson red acrylic and just really go for bold. Go for bold broke on the head. I really want it to pop out. Then we're gonna go with some yellow colored pencil to start hitting some highlights and uh, discovering just where we are with this drawing. All right, looking good. And if you'll notice there on the shoulder in the front, there up at the top, uh, I also peeled some of the charcoal off of that with just a wet brush. And then all of these things that are sort of stabbing out of his neck there, I had a different plan for those and they just didn't turn out and they looked really dumb. And so I decided let's go ahead and paint over them. Why not? That's a good plan. Okay, and then for these dark areas, I wanna pop some, a little bit of color in there. So you're just gonna say, is that like a little fleck of color of like blue and yellow? I mean, I wonder why this is so balanced looking. I wonder why this is so like amazing. Well, that's why. Because I went ahead and dropped in some blues and yellows sort of throughout the drawing here. Going all the way around the bum bums there. Looking good. A Little more uh, refining here with some colored pencils. Adding a little more color pencil light right there, which is wrong. That should have been in shadow. Right here is fine. The light would definitely be catching that. Now I did not 
plan to be using this sort of almost single side cross hatch move with these pencils, but it just sort of happened and I was like, all right, let's just go with it. Why not? I don't know. Let's try some new stuff. Give it a shot. That's what a sketchbook is for, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Try some new stuff. Okay, obviously the title type was too light, so I went back over the top of it with some burnt umber colored pencil and then added in some red on some of the little triangle designs there. Okay, here comes a special surprise. There's gonna be some type on top of this, so we wanna make this type look old and weathered, and that's just a teaser. We'll be right back to that in just a few minutes because the head on this monster was still too dark, and I said, you know what? It needs more red crimson, more cowbell, more red crimson. Let's boost it up even higher. A little more touch up with some colored pencils. Now let's go ahead and cut the type out because that, again, is gonna be a fun little surprise for the end. We'll just get ready, and here it is. It's not really at the end, here it is. This quote is, of course, from our old friend, the bard, Mr. Shakespeare himself, talking all about the tragedy of Macbeth. Now, besides boosting up the magic out of this eyeball, I think that's gonna about do it for us today, folks. But ladies and gentlemen, before we adjourn for the day, let's take a moment to appreciate Howard Hessman, a.k.a. Dr. Johnny Fever, R-I-P-W-K-R-P. And as always, if you'd like to see even more hot sketchbook action, cool stories about art and life, and dad jokes check out these rad videos right here and if you thought this video was better than the fate of king duncan give it a thumbs up subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon so you'll never miss another sketchbook video right here on the time machine thank you so much for watching Cincinnati WKRP.